Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazaglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday in the week of the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 9. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to Him. You know the message He sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that He is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about Him that everyone who believes in Him receives forgiveness of sins through His name. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the lesson. Peter's statement, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, was profound. Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 10, verses 5 and 6, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This being said, Jesus did heal Gentiles. He healed the Gerasene demoniac, the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman, and the servant of the centurion, to name a few. Peter, the one who has been identified as the rock, the one on whom Jesus built his church, is now showing, not only saying, that Jesus came for the Gentiles as well. Jews had considered Gentiles unclean, and so there was a deep division between the two groups. Peter now acknowledges that God's program intends to reach the world through the church. The stories of Peter healing Aeneas, the paralytic, and resuscitating Tabitha or Dorcas clearly show the parallels between Jesus' miracles and Peter's work throughout the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with the group, and as he spoke of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the gospel message. The presence of the Holy Spirit was apparent in the fact that that those to whom Peter shared the good news were heard to be speaking in tongues and extolling God. The Holy Spirit descending on the Gentiles confirms that God accepts Gentiles as they were then baptized after hearing Peter speak. When Peter asked, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? The phrase, just as we have, is important. 
Peter was expressing the bond between the first and new believers through the shared experience of the Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays, 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, or 12.15 on Wednesdays, which includes anointing for healing. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.